next time. So now we will talk a little bit more about the reactors, the different types of reactors and the advantages, disadvantages. So the batch reactor, it's the reactor where you introduce just once your reactants and then you apply the conditions you want for your reaction and you let the reaction take place for a specific period of time, okay? So there's nothing else you do, you just wait for the reaction to finish and then at the end of the reaction time you shut off everything, you remove the products, clean your reactor and then you start again with a new batch, okay? That's why it's called batch reactor. So it's not continuous but the advantages are listed here, okay? High conversions can be achieved because you can actually manipulate the temperature and the pressure of the reaction to increase the conversion. And another thing is that if the, if the cost allows you, you can leave the, re the reaction taking place for a longer period of time to increase productivity, okay? So higher conversions. Flexibility, you can use it for a different types of products because once you clean it, you can introduce different reactants, okay? And you have different products. And it's easy to clean, as I said, because you need to clean it very often. Uh, the configuration, it's, um, it's easy. So this is used um, for the production of expensive products. Uh, and that's why uh, this, is, this reactor can be expensive. And also the high labor costs per bus increase, that's increase the, uh, the overall cost of the products. Okay, that's why we talk about expensive products. Another uh, thing, another, two other, uh, another disadvantage is that it's difficult to upscale. So if you work in a lab scale reactor uh, and, you, and you have good results, you have a very good product with good quality, you need to upscale it. It's not that easy. Okay, that's another disadvantage. And uh, finally, a major disadvantage is many times you don't have consistency in the quality of your product and the characteristics. Okay, so you need to have specific, let's say, um, diameter of your pellets if you produce pellets, but uh, it cannot achieve every time. So you may ha or you may have a wider range. Let's say if you want to have a diameter of uh, uh, 50 microns, uh, you may have a range from 35, uh, from 42, let's say, to 58, okay? So you cannot actually achieve the 50, okay? Or uh, even though uh, you, you see that most of your material is around 50, maybe next time in other batch you get 45, okay? Even though you follow the same exactly experimental conditions. Something very close, okay, okay, not far from the 50. So this is, a re this is the reactor here, okay? You can mix it if you want, but it's just a batch. It's, more, it's an old schematic that's representative of the batch reactor. And this is the CSTR, the continuous steel tank reactor, where you, it's used very uh, often for liquids, liquid reactions. So you introduce your reactants, okay, continuously. You have the reaction taking place under continuous agitation, steering, and then the, you have the flow out of your, this is the flow out, so this is where your products are removed from, okay? So this is a continuous process, in and out. And then you can have um, CSTR reactors in series. Okay, so you have your feed. So you have uh, your exit here that goes to, uh, as a feed to another reactor and so on. So the advantages are continuous operation. That's a good thing because you increase the productivity you have very good temperature control, which you may not have in the batch reactor, okay? This is, this is a reason why you don't get consistent products all the time, of consistent quality of products all the time in a batch reactor, okay? 
because you're supposed to, uh, to, to check the temperature profile of your reactor, but something may go wrong during the reaction, okay? And the temperature can go, can deviate slightly from the set point or from what you expect at, to see at specific location of the batch reactor. So going back to the CSTR, good temperature control, easy to clean, even though you don't have to do it very often, only when you have to uh, do maintenance, and low operating cost, okay? Because you don't have to open it, stop it, and clean it all the time, okay? And it's more automated, so you don't need a lot of, you don't need high labor cost, okay? This, so the labor cost is basically what increases significantly the cost of a product. So if you ever make a, a cost calculation in a, in a plant, you will see that the biggest percentage comes from labor, not from the materials or, or the operational cost, like uh, electricity, okay? So I'm not talking about uh, the equipment cost because that happens once, one time. So even if you uh, estimate the amortization in this cost, if you want, of your equipment, still the labor cost is the highest percent. That's why you, if you're able to reduce the labor cost in your reactors, in your, um, you know, in reactor systems, if we're talking about reactors, this will drop the cost, will result in cost drop, sig significant reduction in the cost. Okay? Disadvantages, you have lowest conversion per unit volume as compared to other types of reactors or the batch reactor, which was an advantage there. And you can have channeling if you have poor agitation. So if you don't, something happens to the steering or if it's not efficient one, you can have channeling to locations where the agitation is not good, so you don't have good conversion there, so you, have you lose some of your reactants, in few words, because they cannot actually um, react efficiently, okay? So that's why the channeling results in lower cost, in higher cost, uh, lower productivity. And, fi and finally, We have the CSTR, and after the CSTR, we have the plug flow reactor, okay? So the plug flow reactor, uh, you see it's like a tube, continuous tubular reactor. So the reactants are, cons are consumed as they go down the reactor, okay? So, as, uh, so they're consumed initially, okay, at the higher rate, and then the concentration becomes smaller, but it still keep uh, consumed as they go down the reactor. So we use it primarily for gas phase reactions, okay? So as you, you see the, the red, uh, the, the circle here, we assume that the concentration and reaction rate varies as you go down the reactor. Okay, in the axial direction. So the reaction rate changes as you go down the reactor. And the concentration, of course. But it, at its location, in the radial direction, these do not change. So here, if you are here, so if you are here in the reactor, so you may see reaction rate falling like that. But here, if you are here, in the radial direction, the, the reaction rate remains the same. So even if you are here, or here, or here, or here, it's the same. And the concentration of your species, of any of your species, at that location. So the advantages and disadvantages, you can achieve advantages, high conversion, and low operating costs. Okay, similarly as in the case of a CSTR, continuous operation also, and you have very good heat transfer. Okay, so the reaction can take place faster. And, but you have poor temperature control. So it's, it's different to control, you have uniform temperature all over your tube, especially if it's a long one. So you may have some significant deviations even if you use a more sophisticated control systems. Okay, and the shutdown and cleaning of the reactor can be, exp of the, can be expensive. Okay, cleaning tubes can be very expensive. 
Uh, it happens from time to time. It's the maintenance. You also have the CSTR. So the black flow reactor is also used when you have catalyst. So you have to put the catalyst as a bed all over the tube. And this is what we call it. This is why we call it packed bed reactor. So it becomes packed bed reactor, okay? Because you have the bed of your catalyst, okay? So basically this is a fourth type of reactor close to, to that. And this is where we use the reaction. We use the R prime for the reaction rate. It's expressed in terms of grams of catalyst.